Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's discussion, we are going to discuss about brown sequat syndrome. This syndrome is very commonly asked in vivas as well as in MCQs. It is very simple since we have already studied our tracks. So, let us try to understand what happens in this brown sequat syndrome. So, coming to this topic, in brown sequat syndrome, both the ascending as well as descending tracks are affected. That is why we have highlighted both the ascending tracks as well as the descending tracks. Now, coming to their functional features, let us try to understand what is the disease. Brown sequat syndrome is nothing but a hemisection of the spinal cord, like half of the spinal cord is affected. This disease is also called as hemisection of the spinal cord. So, what happens here? Like we can see here, this spinal cord, like one half of the spinal cord is completely transected. So, let us try to understand what are all the features. We have ascending tracks which are passing through the spinal cord as well as the descending tracks which are coming to the spinal cord. So, both of them will be affected. Let us try to understand which are affected on the same side and which are affected on the opposite side. We have seen our dorsal column and spinothalamic tract in our discussion of ascending tracts and we have seen our corticospinal tract in the descending tract. Let us just revise them a bit. What happens in dorsal column? The dorsal column starts from the periphery and they go all the way to the medulla and the crossing over happens in the medullary region. The crossing over happens in the medullary region. I will highlight the crossing over region then it is easier to understand. Then what happens in spinothalamic tract? The spinothalamic tract carries the pain and temperature and they cross immediately in the spinal cord itself. So, where is the crossing over here? Here they are crossing immediately in the spinal cord itself. Whereas coming to the corticospinal tract, they start from the above, from the cortex they go down below to the internal capsule and then they cross over in the medulla. Their crossing over is there in the medulla. Now let us come back to our example. Let us take this as right side and let us take this as left side. So, there is a lesion on the right side here. So, let us try to understand what is happening in these pathways. So, if there is a lesion on the right side in the dorsal column, let us see, just track it back. If there is a lesion on the right side, which side is affected? So, considering this our right side and considering this our left side. So, here whenever there is a lesion on the right side, since the fibers are crossing only in the medulla, the same side is affected. So, which side dorsal column pathway is affected? In hemisection of the spinal cord, it is simple, it is ipsilateral dorsal column pathway is affected. So, ipsilateral dorsal column pathway is affected. Now, coming to the spinothalamic tract. The spinothalamic tract already crosses in the spinal cord. The crossing over is there in the spinal cord itself. So, let us see. Similarly, if I draw a lesion here, suppose on the right side, here we are talking about right side lesion. Now, trace this back, trace the pathway back. Now, which side? pain and temperature will be affected. The pain on the left side will be affected because considering this as right and considering this as left, since the crossing over has already happened, now what is happening in the spinothalamic tract? Whenever there is hemisection of the spinal cord, the contralateral side of the spinothalamic tract is affected. Contralateral spinothalamic tract is affected. Now, let us see what happens in the corticospinal tract. There is a lesion in the spinal cord level. Here we are talking about the lesion in the spinal cord level, not higher levels. This is hemisection of the spinal cord. Let us trace it back. The lesion is on the right side. Where is the neural defect? The defect is also on the right side. This shows us that this is also ipsilateral corticospinal tract is affected. So, we have two ipsilateral which is affected and only one contralateral side is affected. So, just remember that whenever there is a hemisection of the spinal cord, only one contralateral is affected which is spinothalamic tract. So, whatever sensations that are carried by the spinothalamic tract will be affected on the contralateral side, rest everything will be affected on the side of the lesion. Suppose the patient is having a right side hemisection, all the right side sensation of the dorsal column as well as the corticospinal tract will be affected, but contralateral side spinothalamic tract will be affected. This is all about the brown sequat syndrome. So, let us summarize what is happening in brown sequat syndrome. In brown sequat syndrome, there is ipsilateral loss of dorsal column. What are all the sensation carried by dorsal column? It is fine touch, pressure, vibration and proprioception. All these four sensations are carried by the dorsal column pathway. Whereas, which is affected in the contralateral side? The contralateral spinothalamic tract is affected. Here, we will highlight the pain and temperature. So, only the pain and temperature will be affected on the contralateral side because these are the two most important sensations which is carried by the spinothalamic tract. And what happens whenever there is a loss of corticospinal tract? Whenever there is a loss of corticospinal tract, 
the spastic paralysis is going to happen because it is a descending track, it is a motor track, it is going to cause the paralysis of the same side. The MCQs will be pretty simple, straightforward. What they will ask is all of the following are seen in Brown Sequet syndrome except and most of the time the option will have the ipsilateral loss of pinothalamic tract which is a wrong answer because we know that spinothalamic tract contralateral side is lost and contralateral pain and temperature is lost. Rest everything ipsilateral side is lost. I hope it's clear. Thank you for listening. We will see in the next video. Thank you so much.